Alright guys, time for my very late review of episode 2 of series 9 of Doctor Who, The Witch is Familiar. Uh, this episode was good, but I feel like it, it, there's a big, a few blaring problems here and there, but I did enjoy the episode. Now, I'm not going to go in depth with it, because obviously the episode's been out for a week, so I probably won't go, like, too in depth with it, but I do want to bring up some interesting points. Now, Let's talk about one thing that I just had a problem with. It just kind of bugged me throughout the entire episode. Is when um, the Doctor is talking with, uh, you know, the Doctor is talking with uh, Davros, and I absolutely love that scene. Don't get me wrong, I absolutely love the scene where the Doctor and you know Davros are having that conversation, and Davros is you know legit dying, and we do discover that the machine he's hooked up to is hooked up to the heartbeat of every Dalek. And it's a great scene. It's a great scene where the Doctor and Davros actually, you know, Davros actually looks through his own two eyes, and it's actually... <laughs> it's kind of funny, because I was like, did they just reference Star Wars? <laughs> when he's like, let me look at you with my own eyes. And I literally said, Moffat, did you just, did you just reference Star Wars? Huh. But yeah, we do get to see, you know, I do love that scene where Davros says, you know, I congratulate you for finding your race, you know, no one should ever be alone, because, and I thought about that line, I was like, that's a good point, because Davros, you know, there may be thousands of Daleks now, but technically speaking, Davros is the last Khaled, he's, a, he's not a, really a Dalek, he's a Khaled, you know, he's what the Daleks used to be, he's what they... They were so. Yeah, he is the last of the. He is the last true Khaled, and even then, that's a long shot. But yeah, I do love that laugh. You know, that laugh they share between is like, "We have established one thing: that you're not a good doctor." And the and doctor's like, "The doctor's like, huh? That's hilarious. That's it's actually funny." Yeah. Now here's the problem I have with this scene, where you see, you know where the doctor and Davros are having their conversation, and you see Colony solves eyes in one of the cables, and I was like, okay, so what's going to happen is that, you know, it's obviously a trap, so, yeah, you've just revealed what the trap is. I knew it was going to be a trap, don't get me wrong, I, I knew right off the bat it was going to be a trap, but, yeah, after the whole thing with Colony Solve's eyes in the cables, I was literally like, okay, I've just figured out the trap, thanks a lot, Moffat, <clears throat> you just showed your hand early, so good job on that, so, yeah. But other than that, I did like the scene with, uh, you know, with Missy and Clara going through the sewers, and it's literally every, you know, Daleks who died, and, you know, they're aging, and this is where it's basically their graveyard. And, yeah, a lot of the Daleks down there are still alive and rotting in the ground. Because sometimes, that is better. I, ha I couldn't help myself. But, yeah. So, what else did I want to talk about with this episode? I did like the explanation with, um, what, you know, how Missy and Clara got away from the, da you know, got away from the Daleks. The whole thing with the TARDIS being destroyed, though, the whole redisperse itself, uh, I was like, that's a stretch. That is a stretch, but whatever, it's science fiction tech, I'll, I'll, I'll roll with it. Uh, what else? What else did I want to talk about? It is cool to see that Davros is still alive. I do like that. And again, you can't keep the Daleks down. We didn't really see Davros die either, so he might still be out there. You know, he's still out there somewhere. So that's pretty cool. As I've always said with Doctor Who villains, <laughs> as I've always said with Doctor Who villains, they don't really, you know, there is no such a thing as death to Doctor Who villains. It's just power napping. That's, that's what it really is when it comes down to the rogues gallery of the Doctor. Power napping. <sighs> so we also get a hint of what might what have might have caused the doctor to leave Gallifrey. The real reason. He, it, you know how he always said, "I got bored with it and left." And yeah, now it looks like we have a reason for what how the series is going to continue. So Davros talks about a legend on Gallifrey that there was a hybrid created from, uh, doc, you know, from Time Lord and. Dalek DNA. So, yeah, there's a possibility that there is a, da a Time Lord Dalek hybrid out there, and I can only imagine what that's going to look like. <laughs> yeah, I, c I can't even imagine what that's you know, what that is going to enthrall on a whole. I can't even wrap my head around it. 
But, anywho, and I thought, oh, it's just, you know, Davros screwing with him. But then, you know, Missy brings it up in a little joke after she seals Clara in a TARDIS. Also, Moffat, why did you decide to have exterminate be the, re the, the word to reload our Dalek's gun? It just seems, like, it's kind of like, um... Uh, the uh, the uh, the sound of the TARDIS makes when it lands is just really the brakes are on. I was just like, it's a fun, it's a little funny bit of information. That I was like, did we really need that? <laughs> it's not to say it's bad. I was just like, was that necessary? I don't know. But what else did I want to talk about? So yeah, I could, so that we might have an actual reason of what happened between the doctor, you know, the doctor leaving, you know. But then again, it kind of, it doesn't really make sense because the Doctor never met, you know, the Doctor didn't encounter the Daleks until he, until he went to Scaro in the, the second episode, the Daleks. He didn't really meet them there. And even the Doctor said in, you know, into the Dalek that, you know, I didn't know who I, you know, what it meant to be the Doctor until I met you, until I went to Scaro and met you. So how could he have known about the Daleks and had a hand in creating them if he didn't know what they were? I don't know, I'm pretty sure they'll think of some BS to think, you know, they'll they'll think of some reason to, uh, you know, to explain why. But it's kind of weird because, you know, it's un it, during, you know, McCoy's era, during Sylvester McCoy's era, it was kind of, you know, alluded to that the, re you know, yeah, the real reason the Doctor left, er you know, left to Earth was to hide the hand of Omega. And again, that's a Dalek story with in remembrance of the Dalek. So it was kind of put there that he, you know, one of the reasons he left, you know, one of, not all of, but one of the reasons he left to Earth was to hide the hand of Scarrow on Earth. You know, that's one of the reasons he ran away. So, was that not the only reason? Did, was it because of this Dalek-Time Lord hybrid? I, I don't know. Yeah, the hand of Oga Omega that it alluded to that uh, he, he helped create. So... Anyway, I'm you know I'm confused by it, but I'm pretty sure it'll make sense later on down the road. I only hope. All in all, it is a good episode. It's nice to see the Daleks actually be malicious. And again, I absolutely love the scenes between Davros and the Doctor. Uh, Peter Capaldi and Julian Bench have a lot of chemistry as in this kind of rivalry. They have a lot of uh, they have a lot of chemistry in their rivalry. So I I uh, I really liked it. I really uh, I really enjoyed it. Also, I don't know how I feel yet about the sonic the sonic sunglasses. I don't know. Like, um, I mean, yeah, the Doctor didn't use sonic screwdrivers, you know, from the fifth Doctor all the way to, you know, the seventh. But, yeah, he didn't start using them again until the eighth Doctor. But, uh, yeah. Well, the seventh Doctor did use a, a, seventh screw a sonic screwdriver in the, in the movie that you know, premiered the eighth Doctor, but... I'm getting confused now. Like, yeah, the, the, this isn't the first... Basically, what I'm trying to say is, this isn't the first time the Doctor hasn't used a sonic screwdriver. So, I think there may be, you know, the Doctor may get his... You know, the 12th Doctor may finally get his own sonic screwdriver somewhere down the road. But, um... I, I don't know. Like, I'm not da I'm not dissing on the sunglasses. I'm not dissing on it yet, because I want to see what they can do. That's what I... You know, all we've seen them do is summon the TARDIS. So, I want to see what they can really do. But yeah. Anyway, I'm really interested to see. I'm really excited to see tom you know tomorrow's ep episode with. Um, it actually is it just me or this this whole plot line seem like the Sea Devils? I mean, I hope it's better than the Sea Devils, but underwater deadly enemy, not the Silurians, but still you know a dangerous enemy and under a nuclear underwater nuclear reactor. This sounds a lot like the Sea Devils. I just hope it's better than the Sea Devils. I can only pray. Also, apparently, Corey Taylor from uh, from Slipknot and Stone Sour will be voicing a, the one of the villains in this episode. Yeah, he's going to voice one of the monsters. He's going to vo apparently voice one of the ghosts. So, yeah, the lead singer of Stone Sour and Slipknot will be playing a Doctor Who villain. I'm ex I'm yeah, sold. <laughs> you got me sold. So you guys tell me, what did you guys think of this episode? Did you guys like it? Did you guys hate it? Um, just comment below, let me know what you thought of this episode. And once again, I'm really sorry that I, you know, didn't get a review out sooner for this. But yeah, like I said last time during my uh, Ninja Turtles review, 
uh, what happened was my direct TV went out so, at, at the time, so I didn't get to see the episode, and I was I was kind of lazy ar- lazying around until uh, to go look for it online. But anyway, once again, uh, hope you guys enjoyed this, and I will see you guys later. <laughs>